What's up, y'all? Bill Kamak with another Logic 9 tutorial. Don't worry about the spelling, just Google Bill. I'm number 8. Viewer Jarmila. I don't know if that's the pronunciation of her name. It might be Jarmila or Jarmilla. But anyway, Viewer Jarmila wanted to know how to use gates and signal generators in Logic. So that's what we're going to go over right now. So I have Ultra Beat playing a pattern. This is the main right here, but what we want to do is we want to affect the kick and the claps. So you use this plus button to bring out your 3 and 4 tracks and 5 and 6 tracks and I have the kick and the claps set to go to those which you can see right here the kick goes to 3, 4 the claps go to 5, 6 everything else goes to main so this is what it sounds like you can see they're on their own tracks So we use this to drag this up here, and that's what you're seeing up there, is this playing. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use these noise gates on these channels over test oscillators or sound generators. However, in Logic, in the side chain, the noise gate will not listen to instrument tracks so you either have to have it listen to a bus or an audio track so you see we have deep trance kick and claps in the corner those don't show up in the list so you have to have bus one and bus two so that's what we're gonna do we're gonna send this same sound from the kick to bus one which is right here the sound from the claps we're gonna send to bus two which is right here and these are going to no output because you don't want to duplicate the sounds so if we send the kick, first of all the kick's going, nothing's happening here. We turn this on, bus one, then we turn the volume up. And now you have signal in bus one, but you don't have sound. If you're only listening to that, you don't get anything. And that's the way we want it, because bus one is only useful to us for feeding this. So when I turn this off of bypass, now you see the activity light which matches up with the signal. Turn this off. Turn this back on, no signal. If I turn this off, nothing. So the kick drum is going to get, well, it is going to get a sine wave. That's why it's called sine wave channel. Anyway, uh, right now, both of them have sine waves. Both of these test oscillators have sine waves on them. but this one for the snare is actually going to be changed to white noise so now we're going to do the same thing with the claps turn on the bus get the volume to unity we got a signal here coming in bus 2 bus 2 goes to this noise gate Activity light matching up. So now we have our signals triggering our noise gates. And what these are over are test oscillators. So if I turn the gate off and I turn the oscillator on and a sine wave, this is what happens. So there are other options such as white noise, pink noise, needle, square, etc. So the point of this whole thing is that by turning on this generator and by having it behind a noise gate and having the noise gate only open when the claps, or in the other case, the kick, go off, what happens is you only get the noise with the actual drum.
snare, we don't really want a sine wave. What we want to do is we want to put white noise on this. So now we're going to do the same thing with the kick. However, what we really want to do is we want to use this to add sub bass. So that's going to be down around 50, 60 hertz. But uh, I'm what I'm going to do is play it and then move the frequency down so you can hear it. Uh, you probably won't hear it after a certain level if you're on computer speakers. But if you're on a system that can hear that low, uh, you'll still hear what's going on.
much it. That's how you use gates and signal generators in Logic 9. Bill Kamak, BillCQC.com, BillCamac.com, Facebook, Google Plus. Get at me, peace.